Okay, this is about energy transfer, particularly in the case of um, food chains and food webs. So if I make up a simple food web here, um, let's have, I don't know, a fly being eaten by uh, a spider. So that's just part of our food chain. I'm not going to put the other organisms in, it doesn't matter. Now remember that this arrow here represents energy being passed on from one organism to another. Now I'm just going to put some numbers in as an example. So I'm going to put that the fly has got 300 kilojoules of energy and the spider takes from that fly um, 80 kilojoules of energy. Now these numbers aren't brilliantly realistic, it doesn't matter for the time being, it's just the principle we're after. Now you might get asked a question which says how much energy is being lost in the transfer from the fly to the spider. So when the spider eats the fly, how much energy is lost? Now this is pretty straightforward because the answer is just 300 minus 80 equals 220 kilojoules. We'll come back to where that 220, uh, 220 kilojoules goes in a second. So that's a fairly straightforward one. You might, however, be asked about the efficiency of that energy transfer. Now this is a slightly more complex bit. What you need to do for efficiency is to work out how much energy comes out and you divide it by how much energy went in and then because we're going to work this out um, as efficiency it's expressed as a percentage out of 100. So we're going to multiply it by 100. Now the key here is that this number we work out will never come out over 100. If you work it out and it comes over 100, you've made a mistake somewhere. It will generally be between maybe about 10 to 40 percent, roughly. Um, energy transfer in, in living organisms, we always lose some. It's never going to be 100 percent. So let's see if we can uh, actually work. Let's see if we can work this out. So the energy that came out was 80. Um, we're going to divide that by the energy went in, that was 300. Multiply that by 100, which would give us our answer of 26.6 recurring. Um, we don't usually use recurring in science, we would round that off, so 26.7%. Notice that another way you can remember, if you like, is to divide the smaller number by the bigger number and multiply it by 100. Okay, so that represents how efficient that energy transfer has been. What happens to all the rest of the energy? Well, if you remember from physics, you can't make or destroy energy, so it's gone somewhere. Where has it gone? Well, in that energy transfer, it's been lost. Where has it been lost to? Well, some of it, in fact quite a lot of it, is lost as energy in the form of heat. Why? Well the, the fly is moving around, it's flying about, it's doing its fly business which requires energy from respiration. Respiration produces a lot of heat and that's wasted. The spider can't eat that lost energy from the fly. Perhaps the spider doesn't eat all of the fly so uneaten parts will also contribute to a lost bit of energy and of course the fly being a living organism will also excrete in humans if you like that would be urine and feces it's not quite the same in the fly but it does still excrete and produce waste products because the spider isn't eating those parts they're wasted in fact if we add up all that energy it would come to the missing 220 kilojoules so in fact Whatever goes in, comes out. 300 went in, 300 would come out. It's just that only the, the spider can only access 80 of it. The rest, 220, is wasted.